uh, a request to play somebody's original song. Um, so you said the integral of five, well, yeah, cosine x, five to the sine x? Uh, so, what would you do here? Yeah, so you always try, if it's not a direct like integral secant squared x or something just direct, the first level of what you try would be u sub. It's weird to say that because that's the only other level we've learned, right? But in Calc 2, one of the first things you learn is, well, what if u sub doesn't work? Then there's other things you can try. Uh, so here, if I let u equal sine x, what's du? Cosine x, dx. Is everybody with me? So then what would the integral look like now? Who? Yeah, because what's cosine x dx? Du. That's why you do this, and you do this correctly, because then it tells you how to rewrite the integral. And, and now it's a question of, do you remember how the hell to do the integral of something's not a base e? How do you do that? Yeah. What's all over natural log of 5? 5 to the power of u. Yeah. Over natural log of 5. Cool. And now you just got to plug back in what? u do b. You guys with me? What was you? Sine x. So there's a problem on the test that was pretty much exactly like this. So watch this. This is kind of neat. So here's the integral again. I'm going to do something. Kind of weird. What if I let u equal fives to the sine x? You would never do that, right? And I don't blame you. We would never do this. I'm not teaching you a thing to always do. It's exploring some shit, which is what math really becomes after or during precalculus. It becomes an exploration. What is du then? So far, so good? Yeah, derivative of the inside, right? Now, do you notice now, this is something, uh, this is another level of use up you don't even know is allowed. This is right there. This whole thing, right? What, what's the only thing I'm, and why do I have this on the bottom? It should be on the top. This is a derivative. So I'm missing natural log of 5. So I took a derivative, so it shouldn't be on the bottom. It should be, on the, it should be right there. Right? You guys with me still? What happened? All right, let me do this one. So what's the derivative of something that doesn't have a base of e? It's itself times the derivative of the inside thing times natural log of 5, right? I've run out of root. Natural log of the base. So don't I have this? That entire thing is in there, right? This is a little weird. What am I missing? Natural log of five. So let me put a one over natural log of five, so I can put a natural log of five in here, right? So here's the freaky thing. What does this become then? This is so freaking cool. This whole thing is du. Oh, that kicks so much ass. What's integral du? What's integral du? What's integral d u? U. There you go. This is u over ln 5 plus c. And what was u? 
phi to the sine x. So you actually, I want you to realize, you just have to replace everything with x with something that has only u in it. So I could end up not even using this. du covers everything. OK, beautiful. Then that's perfect. All right, do you have to understand everything I just said? No. You have to understand that we're shit, because you got another way you can do it. It's fantastic. But this is just showing you the flexibility in the process. All right. Anything else? You don't have to make up your own problem and ask you. You can ask something. Yes? Oh, okay. Beautiful. All right. There was a lot of, um, a, the biggest mistake on the test was people used washers for both problems, which doesn't make any sense. Um, So if I have, uh, all right, so let's say I have this f of x. In fact, uh, let's see, do I want to do a specific example? I can kind of do one like, here we go. Yeah, sure. All right, I'm just going to make it a little something. Yep. Let's say I have a region that looks like this from A to B. And this is uh, F of X, and this is G of X. And let's say you can't solve those for X. You guys understand? It's currently solved for Y but you can't solve for x, which is basically what you have on the test. So if I was going to rotate around the x-axis, here's the really key thing. If you don't have this down yet, this is what to get down immediately. If I want to rotate around the x-axis and I want to use shells, two things. What would a rectangle look like? And it would be integral d what? If you can't answer those two questions, you do not understand shells or washers. You're never going to be able to do a problem. You might get lucky. Does anyone understand the answer to that question? If, I'm going, if I want to use shells, it's going to be integral d what? Yes. And what would the rectangle look like? Mm. The rectangle has to stand or lay parallel to what I'm rotating it around. That's how I create the shell. So it would have to be like this. Now based on what I just said, do I want to use shells if that's my problem? Because what would I need to be able to do with the functions? I'd have to be able to solve them for I have to be able to solve them for x, so they're functions of y. And I just said, I can't do that shell, just like on the test. So do I want to use shells? No. See, now it's nice. Now party brain should go, oh, good. I know washers have to work. Because Mr. Waller is evil. It's not so evil that he's going to give me something where nothing works. That would be, to me, like 10 years. And they're like, screw you, cats here. Do this. Ha ha. Um, <laughs> that's exactly how I'm set. So if I use washers instead, what is it that I need to figure out? So I know it's going to be integral d x, because washers are always d, the thing I'm rotating parallel to. So I'm around the x-axis, so it's dx. Shells will always be the opposite. Let me stop here for a second. You guys would. Yes. When we first started talking about this stuff, I tried to make that a really big point, because that is the thing that determines how everything's set up, determines the limits, determines what goes in here, determines every freaking thing. That's why that's your first step. What works? What's it mean integral d what? And then that gets everything going. So what would my limits be? And 
A to B. I love it, because that's what X does. And what do I need to determine? What goes out here? Because what are washers based on? What? Shape. Circle. And the what of the circle really is important here. The area. And what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Okay, so that, that tells you what the shit. So you, if you understand the idea behind something, it's not memorization. It's just doing what makes sense. There's no way in shit I could ever make it as far in math as I did if I memorized everything. Holy shit. I would have forgotten how to tie my shoes, how to walk, I'd be driven around, but I would know all, I'd memorize all my math. I'd have to make room though. To erase this shit. What's my name? I have no idea. All right. But, and, and of course, so what has got to go in here? Washer, of course, has got that empty middle. How do I know it's going to have an empty middle? How do I know it's not really a disc? So it's, a, it's two discs that I have to take the difference of. Not hugging the axis. I love it. Oh, it's not hugging. It's like, stay with me. So I got an inner radius, outer radius. Are you guys... I mean, these are the things you have to think about before you just start setting shit up. So I know some of you guys are just like, let me put some stuff down. Maybe I'll get enough partial credit. <laughs> or maybe I'll get it right. No, but if you don't know what you're doing, you're probably not going to get it right. So inside, the basic idea is r outer squared minus r inner squared. You cannot, this does not equal, holy shit, that is not true. Not true. Right. Right. Okay. 25 minus 9 is not 4. 5 squared minus 3 squared does not equal 5 minus 3 squared. 25 minus 9 is not 4. All right. So don't try to make this easier. Too bad for you. In this case, what's the R, what's our outer going to be? F of x. And what's our inner going to be? G of x. So then this is what you would do. That's exactly what you would do for, I don't remember what number it was. Yeah, that's a practice fun. The first, oh, I think it was 5C on the test, the last test. Exactly this. Why is this just f of x? When would it not be just f of x? Like, when would it be f of x plus 1? Or... Yeah, if, this, if the rotation axis is not a principal axis, then my radius is going to have to be adjusted. Everything? No? Okay. Y'all like, we're in the same room as you do. Um, all right, so if I was going to rotate this around the y axis, or let's be more interesting, let's say I'm going to rotate it around x equal negative 1. Or even, let me make it more like directly related to some of you guys. Let's say I'm going to rotate around x equals a. That is parallel to the y-axis. So if I wanted to use washers again, I'd have to do integral d y, because washers are always agreeing with the axis I'm rotating around, or parallel to. And like we just discussed, I can't do no dy shit for this, because I can't solve for x. That's the thought process that goes into determining. Now, there are functions that either want to work. So I would kind of start to set one up and go, that looks like it's going to be gross. Let me set the other one up. Guessing the incorrect method is a part of the process. It doesn't mean you're dumb. It doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. It's process of elimination. Here's Failure is an option. It's a part of the process. So if I did want to rotate around this, I have to use shells. What would the rectangle look like? So I'm standing or laying parallel to the rotation axis. It's just going to be standing up. And basically the idea is 2 pi integral rh. That's, and the, this case is going to be dx. Right? 
because 2 pi r h is the surface area of a cylinder. What's the radius going to be here? So, how do you determine? Look where I drew my rectangle. How do I locate my rectangle? X. So how far is that away from the rotation axis? How far apart are X and A? X minus A, holy shit, that's it, all right? That's it. The radius is always the distance from the, the center, the rotation axis, to whatever I'm looking at. So draw an arbitrary rectangle, locate it, that's why it's DX, by the way, because that's how I locate them. What's the radius gonna be then? Freaking X minus A. What are the limits real quick? It's still going to be A to B. I don't have to use the Y shit because I'm not doing DY anywhere. How do I get, what's the height? How tall is that rectangle? Yeah, F of X minus G of X. That happens all the time when you have between two functions, the height's going to be the difference in the two, right? And then times, yeah, that's 5D. That's how 5D works. And then, and then you do it. Uh, washers, the problem with washers is the squares make things gross, as you all found out. You just had to tough it through that. I'm sorry. You got a trinomial times a trinomial. Oh, all you can do is just do it. Jesus. Um, but the nice thing with shells, when it works, is there's no squares. There's still this kind of distribution thing, but it's nothing squared, so it's a little less horrendous to work with. This isn't always horrendous, but the squares make things gross often. You with me? So if I have a choice, I might start with shells. Try to set that up. Oh, oh, oh boy. All right. Is that decent? Is that? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Did you have a follow up, Jason? You all right? Uh, yeah, I have another question. Um, you go over like the TOC, the difference between that TOC and water. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, which one is the one we use more often? Anybody know? Second one. The second one is the one that says, right, figure out the antiderivative and then plug the limits in, right? We've done that a lot. The first one is the one that actually I use to create the second one, so it's still important, but it's not used as much directly. The first one is the one that says, if you have, let's make a G, like G of X equals integral A to X F of T DT, then G prime is F of X. And of course, if this is something more involved than X, you got to chain rule it. In fact, honestly, chain rule always happens. But what's the derivative of x with respect to x? One, so it doesn't really show up, right? So it's not like chain rule turns on and off, it's just when does it actually show up? When the derivative of this is not just one, that's when it shows up. So if I had x squared here, that's what it would be. 2x because of the chain rule. Yeah. Pep talk. Sounds like some boring show. Ready? Welcome back to F talk. Um. So 
take a minute and see if you can figure out what Z prime of x is. So you can say, which part of this doesn't really matter? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There are multiple things. So if you said negative 7, you're right. As long as this is a constant, I don't give a shit what it is. Because if I did the integral, that, when I plug it in, would be a constant, so it would disappear with the derivative. That's why it does not matter what this constant is, as long as it's a constant. Bless you. So please, dear God, don't try to integrate these problems. They give you an integral and they say, find the derivative. Your brain should say, oh, the integral's going to die. <laughs> derivative is going to undo the integral. I shouldn't try to integrate, because more than likely, I'm going to give you something you can't freaking integrate, because you don't need to. So let's see, what do you get? Cosh. Square root of x cubed minus 2x. DT. Times 3x squared minus 2. Oh. Oh, right, I forgot. Yeah, this is a part of this symbol. So when I kill the interval, I kill both of them. So if I asked you what the integral symbol is, and you put this, you're technically wrong. It's integral d whatever, like that. That's it's it's a weird bookmark symbol. Does it make sense? So the symbol is this, and where do I put when I'm going to evaluate it? You put it in the middle. We've never really seen a, a, a function that has that look. You have sine of something, you have natural log of something. You don't have natural log of something, d, you know, that's the, this is like bookends. All right, that's enough of that. Is that decent for an example for that? Okay. Oh yeah. And uh, I just am trying to wonder if it, if it's okay to leave like leave it how it is because seeing how the top part is not zero or infinity, but the bottom part is totally. So it's determinant, yeah, which determinant. means you don't you, you know the answer. You can yeah. interpret it. So what would the answer be? Uh, indeterminate. Okay. No. No, 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 not indeterminate. It is undefined. Better than that. Infinity, which kind of infinity? Infinity plus? Yes, positive infinity. So 8a, my god. What's the only time you use L'Hopital's? What do you have to verify first before you use L'Hopital's? It's got to be indeterminate because otherwise L'Hopital says, I don't know if it's going to work, guys. <laughs> it might work, it might not work. So don't use it if it's not if, if you think about it, I know I said this before. If it's not indeterminate, you have to be able to determine the answer. That's what the opposite of indeterminate is. So why would you do any shit to it? You should be able to figure out what the answer is. And please, dear God, stop doing this. You cannot plug infinity into something, right? If you can, see me, because you are pure energy or something. You've been, oh, you've achieved nirvana. I've made it to infinity, Jeff. I've seen it. My holy, how did you get back? You powder, right? Have you ever seen a movie about it? Pure energy. No, sorry. Look at it. It's a good movie. Powder. It's not about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> That's traffic or whatever. Got to mention cocaine at least once a semester. <laughs> Anything else that I, yes, did you have something? Is that like what you would do um, for the test for on like number one? 
Yeah, number one was all about F talk. One. Yes. And then um, for the on number three on the practice final, um, how do you do D? Oh, all right, all right. Beautiful. I love this. I love this. Okay. When you take a derivative, you create a new function. It is a function in its own right. It doesn't depend on the thing it came from. It's its own function. If I said maximize blank, what do you do? Huh? How do you do that? Take the derivative, set equal to zero, find where it's undefined, right? So you take the derivative of what? Of blank. So if I want to maximum, maximize velocity, I better have a velocity function that I can then take the derivative of. There you go. On that problem, you guys get so confused because you're taking derivatives to get the velocity, and you're like, well, what the shit do I do? I already took a derivative. I don't give a shit. It's a velocity function. Any function anywhere in the universe, I want to maximize it. I take a derivative. Get the critical points, analyze them. Doesn't matter where it came from. We had to create the velocity of function, right? We created it. Oh. And then we can do stuff with it. It's great. That's why I love that problem. I really, not because I want to trip you up, but put it on the practice test, didn't I? So we can talk about it right now. So that when you get the actual final, you'll just, if I say maximize blank, you're like, do I have a blank function? I got it. Let me take the derivative. If I say maximize the cost, what do you have to first create? Cost function. However the hell you get the cost function put together, take a derivative, set equal to zero, see where it's undefined. I like it, I like it. Yes, is that cool? Yes. So for A, you said it was determinate? Yes. Is that because it has the little plus sign? No. No? Why does it have the little plus sign? Because it tells you which side it's coming from. Well, so why did I have to put it there for it to make sense? because we're not dealing with complex numbers in this one, right? Thank God. Calculus with complex numbers. That's like math 600 or something. Yeah, because it gets really exceptionally weird. So here, I gotta keep it real. I can't have real numbers unless x is above three, right? right. At three, of course, is undefined, so it's the limit as x goes to three. Top is not zero or infinity, so it, there's no way it can be indeterminate. That's why it's not indeterminate, yeah. So I have, I want to make sure the distinction here. If you have this, what form is this in? In parentheses. What form is this in? Infinity over infinity, right? Mm -hmm. That is identifying the form of this. That is not plugging infinity in. That's the difference between this shit and this fine thing. <laughs> This is understood to mean I'm looking at the form to make sure I can use locutals. This is plugging infinity in. Yeah, go pick up infinity and bring it over here. <laughs> That's what you're basically saying you could do, which is why I wanted you to come see me if you do it. Is that, is that decent? So that one's not indeterminate because it's three over whatever. It doesn't matter. So it's, it's determinate. Back to it again. Just wondering about C now. So since it's basically the both equal to zero. Yeah. So do I need to also use Locutal's rule to change that? Do they both equal zero? Let's see. If they both equal zero, that would be a remarkably easy problem. <laughs> and it can't because it's this part C of this problem. It's got to be something funky. So did anybody? So A C is a great question to ask. What was it? 8, right? Uh, x minus 8 times ln x minus 8. So there were some psi indeterminate forms. What form is this in? As x goes to 8, this, of course, goes to 0. zero. Now be careful. What does this go to? 1? No. Zero. Zero. No. Zero. no. The inside goes to 0. But can you do the natural log of zero? No. Well, that's the natural log as you approach zero from above. What does natural log look like? Yeah, more specific. Infinity. Negative infinity. 
is why pre-calculus, I call it graphing hell, not to make it seem like it's impossible, but to make you realize the point of pre-calculus is to hammer these forms in your head. Because then you can do shit like that a lot easier. Natural log is here, oh shit, I know it looks like this, there's an asymptote, it's going to go to negative infinity. See, it's so much easier if you know what it looks like. Or you're playing in the calculator, you get error, and then you just erase it and hope I don't notice you didn't do the problem. Once a, did I tell you that one semester somebody told me? Yeah, I heard you sometimes don't realize I'm just going to, I'm like, I'm going to look at your test. You're stupid. I'm going to look at your test and make sure. Sorry. Um, so how the shit do I do this? Is, is this, can I use L'Hopital's rule in this? What does L'Hopital's rule require? It requires a ratio. So I have to make this into a ratio. How do I make this into a ratio? How do I make x times y into a ratio? Um, divide by... Yeah, I can guess. That's all. Right? So I can rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 8 from above. I'm going to choose this one because I don't want natural log to the negative. That would suck. So I'm going to put this to be x minus 8 to the negative 1. These are the same thing. Same thing. Now what form is it in? That goes to negative infinity. That goes to what? What is 1 over x minus 8? 1 over 0 is what it's, the yeah. form of it's going to infinity. Is that a L'Hopital situation? Yeah. Hell yeah. So then you tack it with 5. No, L'Hopital. All right, let me go ahead and give you guys, I'm going to give you guys the answer key for this. Right, it's a two-parter, so bear with me. Don't give away anything I give you. They're both yours. Thank you. 
Just in case, I don't remember if I said this, but I gave back a lot of homework today. If it has nothing written on it, then I'm assuming it's okay. This homework's only worth 5% of your grade, so even if you cheated on everything, I never caught you. It wouldn't do much for you. Uh -huh. In a perfect world, I would make homework worth zero. I did that one semester, never again. Nobody did it. They all died on the first test. I'm like, oh, shit. I better make this worse sometimes. <laughs> In my third semester teaching, I tried that. Human nature. Yeah. Yeah. So number six on the practice final is the implicit differentiation problem. change that radical to a power. Try to find dy dx. So just take the root. So what happens here? Good. General. Because the negative would go through. Yeah, that's one of the Easy little mistakes to make. Oh, I never get myself in the group. What's the derivative of secant? Yeah, secant tangent, but they're of y, right? Yes, good, all right. And now, you're, now it's algebra. dy dx is a variable you're trying to solve for, so you get everything with dy dx on one side, factor it out, divide by the shit you don't want. That's algebra. So I'm gonna move this over, I'm gonna move this this way, right? I want to get all my dy dx stuff on this side. Uh, so I might move this over here. This is still here. This is still here. And now this is over there. And then I can factor dy dx and then I'm going to divide by bam, bam, bam. Divide by that. So that's related to, you know, how do you, how do you solve for P? You don't subtract this over and go, P equals A minus P. Out. No, it's not solve for P. You take a P out. And then divide by the shit you don't want. Right? Same thing. Is that cool? Yes. Oh yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> that isn't me excited to be evil. To you. That's me excited about a neat problem. I don't know if you guys understand that. Um, Does everybody got what they want from this? I mean, it's on the answer to you, right? Hopefully. I made that answer key this summer, so I don't remember what I did. Um, so
So five's got this, you know, the cone, you know, when you go to the thing, you get the water cooler, you pull out the paper cup in the shape of a cone. That's what we're talking about. Uh, paper cup in the shape of a cone. <laughs> with height 10 centimeters. And radius 3 centimeters. It's being filled with water at the rate of 2 cubic centimeters a second, blah, 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 blah. So, one big thing people have trouble with here is don't plug in snapshot information too early. Because then your derivatives will come out to be zero. You need to set up a relationship in general, take derivatives, then plug in the specific information you want. So what formula am I trying to create here? What formula is going to govern this whole thing? Being filled with water at the rate of 2 cubic centimeters per second. What's that derivative of the volume? So I need the volume of this thing, right? Now, not the volume of the whole thing. That's a constant. What's changing? I can use blue. That's crazy. The water. So you pick a place where the water is. Is that really where the water is? Who gives a shit? This is no paper cup anywhere. <laughs> Bro. So you just pick a position for the water, and yes, that's how I say water. What's this? Good, R. I love it. I don't know what the shit it is. It's R. And yeah, what's this? H. Kick ass. So what's the volume of the water? I would give you this formula if you came up, or maybe I'll put it on the test out. But I hope somebody remembers the volume of a cone. Yeah, that would be a repeated circle for this much. And that's one third because it cut a cone out. All right. So the problem with this equation is what? What's the problem with this equation for us? Considering we're in single variable calculus. Now, to be honest, you could actually do the derivative right now. You'd have dr, dt, and dh, dt. You could figure, oh my god, I don't know why you do that. What can I use this to help me with this? What can I do with this to help me with this? There's too many variables. I should be able to set up a relationship between R and H, my two variables. If I get a relationship between R and H, I can substitute for one of them. Considering all the information I'm curious about and I'm given, what am I given information about and what are they asking me about? What are they asking me about? You can even just tell them in English and we'll work on translating the math. What are they asking me about? How fast is the water level rising because I'm filling this thing up. What's that? What's that in symbols? DH, DT. When the water is five centimeters deep, every damn thing they tell me about is H. So I want to solve something for R so I can replace R with something with H because that's the only thing this problem cares about. Right? It's a radius problem. Doesn't like radii. Sorry, that was a horrible joke, but out here. What can I set up from this? R squared plus H squared plus C squared. L squared. Am I, do I care about this? No. Do you see that I have similar triangles? So I can set up a proportion. So for example, that radius to that radius is equal to that height to that height. That happens so often in math where you set up proportion. So small radius to big is equal to small height to big. That's how similar triangles work. Right? And if you really, I mean, if you really see, what is this angle? I don't know. Does it change for this triangle and this triangle? Does that angle change? So all the side ratios have to stay the same. That is freaking trigonometry, like the basis of trigonometry. That's why you memorized all that shit, because if the angle doesn't change, all the ratios are the same. That's what it means. 
That's why sine 30 is what it is, because I don't care how far you go out, the ratios will always be the same. So that's all this is saying. The ratios are the same. So can I solve this? What do I want to solve this for? So who's paying attention? I want to solve for R, so I can replace it with H. So R equals. So I plug that in for R. You see how this is another tell me, ask me kind of situation that happens so often in math. They tell me something, they ask me something, I use them together. So you plug that in, take derivatives, plug in the 5 and the other stuff, plug it in the right place. And the rest of it's on the answer. You guys are a little lucky. What time is our final start? 7 15, thankfully, because it always sucks when the final starts like 45 minutes earlier than the class normally starts. I, and I try to tell people if you show up at class time, you have chosen to have less time for the final. I'm not giving more time. You guys, if you show up on time, you're good. Some of you guys are like, I'll show up on my regular time at 7 15, and I'm good. So that works. If you show up late, you've chosen to have less time, I'm not giving you more time. If you have a major emergency, true emergency happen, just email me. Because I'll be checking my email. I've had major emergencies happen during finals and that really sucks. Probability is pretty low that it would just happen to happen then. We'll see. The major emergency is I didn't study them. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. I forgot. So seven were these problems from the book. I think at least one of them I've done on a previous practice test. Oh, okay. Perfect. 52, 54, and where'd it go? 59. I think 59 we've done before. 54, I'm not going to give you something like 54. So let's look at 52. This is from that optimization section. Um, so 52 says, I'm pretty sure we did the one about the hockey team in an earlier practice test, number 59. 52 says, find the point on the hyperbola. Point on that closest to three zero. So is this trying to maximize or minimize something, and what is that something? Minimize distance. Minimize distance. You remember that earlier discussion. Minimize blank. So I have to first create a function that represents blank, in this case distance, and then I can find critical points. So how do I find the general distance between the point 3, 0 and the hyperbola x, y equals 8? What do you need 
in order to find the distance. You can find the distance between two points. All right, that's the place to start. What does x, y equals 8 look like? What does mine say? That's the point 3, 0, sorry. x, y equals 8. Well, just give yourself a few points. Right? If x is 1, y has to be what? 8. If x is 2, y has to be 4. If x is 3, y has to be 8 thirds, so a little less than 3. 2 and 2 thirds, so 2 and, oh, two, and 2 thirds right in there, man. So, I mean, it's like this here, right? Your graph doesn't have to be beautiful because you're not going to use a graph to solve this. So it looks like the minimum should be around here somewhere. Like straight up doesn't look to be the minimum. Of course, my, my graph could suck, but it looks like the answer should be in here somewhere. You guys see that? Okay. Uh, so I can find the distance between two points. So I've got one point. What's the other point I'm going to use? You need a general point. So what's this point right there? That's why. <laughs> I mean, but, but be more specific now. In order for it to sit on that curve, what's got to really be true about why? It's got to be true about why. Or that's easy. Y has got to be 8 over X. There you go. So that's the point I'm going to use. That point and this point. Do you see if I write this, that represents all the points. So I really am finding the distance between all the points on this curve and 3, 0. Now there's a whole other side to this. You guys with me? The negative side? But that's too far away. I'm not even going to worry about that. Sorry.